Good day everybody! This is Mr. Brian T. Cruz, your Physics 1 teacher for this semester. For today's lesson, we're going to discuss about accuracy and precision. But before anything else, let's have our learning objectives for this morning. So first one, let's differentiate accuracy from precision. Number two, differentiate random errors from a systematic errors. And lastly, solve problems involving accuracy and precision. I know you're thinking right now, why should we even care to discuss that topic again, sir? It is simply because, in the field of science, wherein measurements and many trials exist, one should test whether the values obtained are considered valid or not. As you all know, as we go through with our lesson for our this per semester, we are going to have many experimentation, and in every experimentation, you're going to do trials for you to identify whether the values or data that you obtained are valid or not. So let's recall the definition of accuracy. When we are talking about accuracy, this is the closeness or nearness of the computed value to the true value. So just like what you have learned when you were in grade 11 in chemistry 1, you learned there that if the value obtained or the percent error that you are going to obtain will be less than or equal to 10%, definitely you are accurate. Another definition for accuracy are the following. Hitting the target value, being able to derive the true accepted and required measurement, and just simply getting the it. And based from the definitions that we have a while ago, if we're going to put that into a real-life situation, for example, this dart board, your target is the bullseye. So if all the dart pins will hit the bullseye, definitely we are accurate. What is precision? Precision is, number one, test of how well the result agree with one another. Next, measure of nearness and closeness to the value. And lastly, consistency in the obtaining of the result. Let's put those definitions in this sample diagram. So if you will notice, if this is the dartboard and all the dart pins was placed or was targeted on, that, on this certain point, Definitely, you are not accurate, but you can say that you are precise because all of the dart pins are very near from each other. And let's have this one. So if you will notice in this dart board, one of the dart pins are hit, hitted the target, while the other two did not. So therefore, we can say that we are accurate but not precise. In the field of science, wherein you are going to test the values that you obtained, you can use the test of accuracy or the percent error. This is the formula for the percent error. Percent error is equal to the actual value minus the experimental value, which is the absolute value of it, over the actual value times 100%. If your value is more than 10%, we can say that you are inaccurate. But if that is less than 10%, you can say it is accurate. But this is only just applicable for us in our school. But in some universities sooner or even in your field, if you're going to choose med tech or even the other courses in college, you might encounter this and they might have different set of agreement for the accuracy, and accuracy of the value. The test of precision is known to be the deviation. So when we are talking about deviation, this is actually the absolute deviation wherein it is equal to the x minus the x bar and the relative deviation which is actually your average absolute deviation over the mean value that you obtained times 100. If your value is more than 10%, you're unprecise. But if that is 10% or less, that will be precise for us. Again, it is only applicable in our school. As I said to you a while ago in our objectives, we are going to differentiate random to a systematic errors. So in the field of science, there is no perfect result. But there are reasons why do you obtain or you have obtained those kind of errors in your result. 
So when we are talking about random error, this is the result unpredictable or unevitable change during the data measurements. It affects the precision of the measurement. Example is the electronic noise, slight variation in temperature, and uncontrollable presence of the wind. Another type of error is the systematic error, usually come from the measuring instrument or in the design of the experiment itself. Here, it limits the accuracy of the result. Aside from that, we can use the percent difference. When we are talking about percent difference, this is the measure how far apart different measurement values are from one another. It is an indication of the precision. So for you to solve for it, this is the formula for the percent difference. Percent difference is equal to the measurement 1 minus measurement 2 divided by the measurement 1 plus measurement 2 over 2 times 100. This is used for you to determine whether the values that you obtained, the two values that you obtained, is precise. For this example problem per percent difference, you will see the complete solution of the answer on the next slide. For some, let's try to solve the percent difference sample problem. But before that, let's read. So two trials were performed in an experiment to determine the latent heat of vaporization of water at 100 degrees Celsius. The values of LB of water is obtained were 532 calories per gram and 536 calories per gram. Find the percent difference of the value. So X1 is 532. And our x2 is 536. Using the formula for percent difference, which is x1 minus x2, the absolute value divided by x1 plus x2 divided by 2 times 100, let's substitute it. So 532 minus 536, we will get negative value here, which is negative 4, divided by 532 plus 536 divided by 2. Then multiply it by 100, we will get 0.74%. So therefore, there is a 0.74% of percent difference between the two values obtained in the experiment. Let's try to solve the percent difference sample problem. But before that, let's read. Let's solve sample number 2 using Microsoft Excel. So for example number 2, let's read first the problem. The true value for the volume of the rubber ball is 50 cc. Is the measure accurate, precise, or both? So here, I will be showing you how to solve for the average and the absolute deviation. So I have written here the trials that we have, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4 trials and the value of the volume for each trial. So we need to solve for the average volume. So how do we do that? So right here equals... Then average, the word average, open close parenthesis, then drag the value that you have here. Then close parenthesis, then press enter. So there you have it. So 50.14. Now, how do we solve for the absolute deviation? So for the absolute deviation, as we all know, this is the difference between the average volume minus the value obtained for each trial. So you just write equals, then 50.14 minus L8, then press equals. So we have 0 0.62 for the first trial. Then let's drag it here to the fourth trial. Then you have the value for the absolute deviation. But since it's absolute deviation, we are going to disregard the negative sign in getting the average absolute deviation. Since we're done already solving for the absolute deviation value, and as we all know, for getting the average absolute deviation, what are we going to do is to copy the values that we have here for trials 1 to 4 for the absolute deviation. So let's copy the value. So right click, then copy, paste it on the other side, then paste values so with that as you all as you can see we're just going to remove the negative sign for trial 2 and trial 4 so that we can solve for the absolute absolute deviation so with that then let's remove then below let's try to 
solve for the average absolute deviation. So equals, then type the word average, then open close parenthesis, then drag from this 08 up to 011, then close parenthesis, then press enter. Then you will see the answer will be 0 0.90, which I place it here on this part. So 0 0.90. So let's just increase the decimal places. Oops. Yan. Since we computed already for the average volume together with the average absolute deviation, we can now solve for the precision of the values that we have. So for the precision, we're going to use the absolute average deviation together with the mean value. So using the relative deviation formula, which is average absolute deviation divided by the mean value times 100. So using the value, so 0 0.90 divided by 50.14 times 100, you will get 1.79%, which is precise. Next. For the percent error, you're going to use the actual value for the volume, which is 50, and the experimental value, which is 50.14. So using the formula, AV minus EV divided by AV times 100, so substituting it, so 50 minus 50.14 divided by 50 times 100, you will get 0.28%. Therefore, it is accurate. For the interpretation, we can say, therefore, the experimenters are both accurate and precise based on the data they obtained from the experiment. So, two trials were performed in an experiment to determine the latent heat.